Good evening, everyone. This is Monday, October 29th, meeting of the Committee of the Whole. We're here today to discuss uh, one item on the agenda, uh, which is a motion by Councilor Rotondo to discuss uh, HYM and traffic mitigation. However, I, I requested a meeting for this purpose to go over any questions the City Council may have of HYM, as well as uh, prepare for some of the upcoming months and things that may come before the Council. So at this time, I'm going to open it up to the representatives from HYM to give a presentation, and then I'll follow that up with any questions uh, from the councillors or anyone else that has any questions. Um, Madam Clerk, can you take a roll call of the committee? Roll call of the Committee of the Whole, Councillor Guinasso. Here. Here. Councillor Keefe? Absent. Councillor McKenna? Here. Here. Councillor Morbido? Here. Here, Councilor Novoselsky. Here. Here, Councilor Patch. Here. Here, Councilor Powers. Here. Here, Councilor Rizzo. Here. Here, Councilor Rotundo is absent. And Councilor Zambudo. Here. Here, and President Giannino. Here. Here, quorum is present. Thank you, Council President. Uh, again, my name is Tom O'Brien with the HYM Investment Group. Um, we're going to present to you uh, some slides that I think are going to show up on the TV back here if you want. I'm not sh exactly sure how the, uh, the Revere TV folks are going to switch back and forth, but um, I'm going to try and rely on those if, if I could. Um, thank you again for giving us the opportunity to, uh, to be involved um, with this project and to present it to, uh, to you here tonight. Um, we've been involved in the, in the process of trying to move forward when a, on a master plan with this uh, project for probably two years, I think. We first had a handshake to purchase the site uh, in the fall of 2016, uh, and then acquired the site itself in May of 2017. As you can see, it's, um, uh, it's a very large site, as you know, 161 acres. I think you all are very, very familiar with it from uh, all the different um, history that's come with the site and all the activity that's been around trying to redevelop it. Um, we've been... Um, uh, actively involved in, in trying to uh, go through and introduce an idea behind how we might uh, redevelop the site. Um, but generally, let me just give you a, a quick sense of the schedule. As I said, we bought the site in May of 2017. Uh, we've been engaged in a public community um, engagement process for at least those 18 months. I think we've done over 350 different meetings with different community groups, uh, including certainly many of those uh, meetings here in Revere. One of the things we've done specifically, and I know there are members of what, what are called the Development Advisory Group um, uh, who are here today, but one of the things we've been specifically involved in is a very structured process with the city uh, since uh, last spring, since I think end of May, beginning of June of last year. Uh, and I believe that uh, Bob O'Brien and, and other members of the city administration will present this, but there are members from the DAG who are here uh, as well, I think, to, uh, to talk about this. Um, the idea behind the process was to structure and sort of professionalize the process of reviewing uh, what we had proposed. And as we said, we've been engaged in structured meetings once every few weeks or so uh, on the site uh, from June until uh, just last week or so. Um, it's been, for me, I've been involved in this business for 25 years. It's been one of the best structured and most professional processes I've ever been involved in in almost any community. Uh, it's been really, really great, um, and we've gotten a lot of feedback. We've really appreciated all the work, uh, the volunteer work that a variety of people have put into this. Uh, and there have been interested folks from uh, school department former members to uh, some of the, the counselors who are here today to uh, other members of the community who are uh, community leaders as well. So it's, it's been a, a terrific process to be part of. Um, you know us. We're the HYM Investment Group. This is a slide that shows you the various professionals that are involved here. CBT is our master planner. Stoss is our landscape architect. I think you've seen us present some of these things. And this is a list of some of the meetings that we've done, just a few of them really. But I think we have two slides worth of these meetings all the way across uh, the board. So we'd, we've been engaged, as I say, in a very extensive community process. So as you know, um, our vision here is to create a mixed-use, walkable neighborhood. That's really the most important thing. Um, we think that this site can be a great place for people to eat a meal, great place for jobs, great place for new companies to be located, a great place for people to live, great place for retail, all those things. So this slide shows you our, our basic principles. Again, a mixed-use, walkable neighborhood, but we also want it to be a place that has great parks. So we said from the beginning that 25% of the site would be dedicated to open space, and so 25%, uh, which you yields 40 acres across the whole site, will be dedicated to, uh, to open space. In addition to that, um, we're focused on neighborhood retail, as I said. So retail for us is not 
big box retail. We want the retail to be small restaurants, small stores, neighborhood oriented retail. Um, we then, if we've set the table correctly, if we've made it a great place for people to live, great place for people to eat a meal, then we think we can make economic development happen. Um, so we, you know, clearly mean for this to be a site in which there can be great uh, office buildings, great companies located there, uh, all kinds of opportunities for job creation on this site. It's a big enough site for that. Um, it's a transit-oriented development site, certainly, as you can see in the middle slide, and it's also a site that we can focus on sustainability um, and resiliency as well. So the open space framework, we kind of start with this as a, as a basic framework. I'm going to run through this fairly quickly, but, but generally because it's one site, we can approach the planning of this right from the get-go and get the, uh, the, the open space framework uh, you know, managed well right off the, the bat. So we'll focus on a central park in the beginning, in the, in the middle of the site. Uh, we want that central park to have a variety of different types of character associated with it. It can be active, can be a place where people could read a book. In addition to that, we uh, see that there can be opportunities to take what we call the green fingers and extend the open space into other parts of the site so that um, other building sites or other building uh, locations can share in the open space. And those green fingers can be used to help us manage uh, the influx potentially of stormwater on those occasions as well. We want there to be uh, very active spaces so there can be active linear parks that will connect uh, around the, the entire open space system, which will give people an opportunity to uh, make a loop. If you want to run for you know a mile and a half or do a walk for a mile and a half, you'll do a full loop on the site. There's chances for us to uh, save some of the historic pieces on the site as well and introduce um, public art as well, which is really a great opportunity for us. The key thing, and this, a lot of this came out of our, our department, our, our development advisory group um, meeting, the key thing here is to make this site welcoming to all the members of the public. We want this to be a place, whether you live there or just want to shop there, we want this to be a place that you come and enjoy gathering at. Um, the open space can be places where we hold festival marketplaces. There can be great chances for people to gather. We envision there being food truck festivals, there uh, being, you know, as we said, kind of festivals across the board uh, that allow us to present a vibrant, active site that is very public. This is, gives you a sense of the kinds of civic plazas and civic buildings that we believe we can build on the site. Here's one that's right on, this is the, uh, the building is kind of on the left here. This could be music, could be public gathering. Um, and then on the right is the Central Park, uh, as you think that through. The master plan vision. So here's, here's our master plan vision for the site. Um, this is the full site. So this is both the Boston portion and the Revere portion of the, of the site. Um, this gives you a sense of the block sizes, relatively small block sizes. We want it to be a pedestrian friendly place. Again, the open space is central to, you know, to what we're planning. This is just the Revere portion of the, of the master plan as you, as you uh, look at it here. Uh, so just uh, by Beachmont Station is the, is the Revere portion of it. This gives you a sense of the land use. We've, uh, this is something we've been presenting to you uh, since over a year, I think. Um, uh, this land use plan really hasn't uh, changed very much since we last uh, met with you. You recall that when we sat with you um, uh, back over the winter, we completed a, a rezoning process with you, which was completed in, in February. Uh, this basic land use plan, this basic uh, master plan is the same as, uh, as, it, uh, as it ever was through that, whole, uh, through that whole process. The key things to focus on here, particularly in the early phases, we want to build an innovation center. So we want to set the table for there to be commercial uh, property on this site. And so we'll do an innovation center in our first phase. In addition to that, we want there to be a retail uh, square and a retail uh, walk that kind of complements the retail that exists already in Beachmont Square. And we want to make, sh make sure that this kind of marries up with um, the existing retail in Beachmont Square and really enhances the neighborhood as we, as we move forward. This gives you a sense of the hierarchy of streets here. Um, so this gives you a sense of exactly how we're trying to organize the streets. I would just point out a couple things on this slide. We'll get some of this a little bit later, but um, we're going to invest a tremendous amount in the 1A corridor and specifically in the existing entrance to Suffolk Downs uh, that is on Tomasello Drive, uh, basically off of 1A, so that the main entrance that you think of today where the Suffolk Downs sign is uh, on 1A, that will become a fully signalized intersection and it becomes a very active place. It'll become one of the main entrance and really the main entrance uh, for the entire site as a signalized um, uh, intersection. It will work then to allow people to make a left coming out of the site, It'll allow people to make a left coming into the site if you're coming southbound. So we really think that this uh, will handle the majority of the traffic as we go through. Um, in addition to that, you know, we'll go through the bike network. There's um, a tremendous amount. I think uh, 
almost seven miles of, of bike trails that we'll create uh, throughout the, um, uh, the site. So this is a, a slide that kind of shows you how the bike trails will, uh, will work uh, through the site. Every street will have a bike related trail. In addition to that, the pedestrian network is very active. We want this to be a place that uh, is, uh, allows pedestrians to walk everywhere, very pedestrian friendly site. These are those pedestrian loops that I described for you. So, uh, you know, you can do a shorter loop, you can do a full two and a half mile uh, uh, run around the full ex exterior of the site and a one and a half mile loop on the interior portion of the site. We've shown you these before, you know, the sense is that there can be a number of distinct neighborhoods. You can see that the Beachmont neighborhood is, is the one closest to the Beachmont uh, station. Uh, and we focus, you know, again on the, the character of that neighborhood as being a split between commercial, a 50-50 split between commercial and residential, um, which is, again, what we had presented previously to the council uh, for the last year or so. So what are the mix of uses as we, as we think this through? So again, as we think through the office pieces of this, the blue uh, buildings here are office and lab related uses. Uh, so this, this would be uh, the largest single office uh, complex that would be built in Revere, I think in Revere's history. It's about two and a half million square feet of office and lab uh, in these uh, blue buildings, including the, the, uh, the renovation, um, uh, I'm sorry, the innovation building. The office lab, the nature of work has changed drastically, particularly in the last five years or so, in that uh, office um, users and lab companies are much more interested in being places where the work can be collaborative among workers, uh, to be on campuses where there's opportunities for people to step out and have lunch in an interesting place or enjoy dinner or enjoy a park. So the, the, the space is very different than it ever was. It's not no longer the case that a financial services company needs to be only based in downtown Boston. They can be in a variety of different places like this, uh, a campus setting that would offer uh, opportunities for their workers to be in you know, interesting spots to work. The first, as I said, uh, is this innovation center, which is about um, 35,000 square feet, uh, focused again on at Beachmont. This is a right in phase one. This kind of helps us set the tone of what we're going to do right off the bat. Uh, we think of this as a great flexible space that can be also a community space when it's not working as a as an innovation center. So we think of this as kind of our gateway as we as we go forward. Again, same proposal that we've uh, talked about with you, you know, during the course of the year. This is a rendering that shows you Beachmont Square as you look toward the T, so your back is kind of toward the interior portion of our site. That's the Innovation Center on the left there, a rendering of, of what that might look like on the, on the left. Um, these are kind of precedent images that give you a sense of what that, that center can look like. So these are images, many of which are taken from the Seaport District in Boston, from that Innovation Center that exists uh, there today. Um, the retail uh, uh, plan obviously is, is, again, extremely important to us. We want this retail to uh, exist right at Beachmont Square, right as soon as people approach from the T and be able to walk that whole retail stretch along what we would call a main street back towards Suffolk Downs uh, T Station. We call that other square towards Suffolk Downs T Station, Belle Isle Square. It's a, it's a, a kind of a play on, um, on uh, the Belle Isle Marsh. Uh, and we think, frankly, that long term, that Belle Isle Square uh, name is a name that uh, hopefully will stick. But that walk, that retail walk, is really important. That's a main street that we want to uh, have be successful. And obviously, we're retail heavy in the early stages uh, here at Beachmont and in Revere. This is a really important uh, piece for us is to get this retail right. We want the retail, as, as we say, to be interesting. We've also been working and we've pledged uh, to the city, and a lot of this was discussed during the DAG process, that 10% of our retail we would make available to local retailers on lower cost on a lower cost basis so that um, we can have uh, what we would call authentic retail or genuine retail that is locally based. That's a really important thing uh, for us. Um, this just gives you a sense of the kinds of retail, the kinds of festival that, uh, you know, that we would think about. A lot of what we're thinking here is you need to kind of curate this a little bit with the kinds of professionals who would uh, bring retail like this to uh, the site. Um, creating opportunities for there to be farmers markets, opportunities for there, as I said earlier, food truck festivals, uh, places where there might be some music, things like that, great gathering spots. We want this to be a place that is a really attractive place for people to gather, very public. We want everybody in the community to feel welcome here. Um, this just gives you a sense of a rendering of what that Main Street district could feel like, the sense of what the streets will feel like, the sidewalks, again, very wide sidewalks, very pedestrian friendly. This is something very, um, you know, interesting. This is the culmination of a lot of the work that we've done, uh, you know, for all of our careers as we try and make this work. Um, in addition to that, we'll do a hotel in the first phase, so this gives you a sense of where that hotel will be. The hotel is really important to us to get this right. Um, obviously, the hotel market today is, um, is very strong, and there's opportunities to finance hotels. 
but we don't want this hotel to be just a hotel that is associated, say, with the airport. We want this hotel to be special. So this gives you a sense of some precedent images of other hotels that are elsewhere in the greater Boston area. Uh, on the, uh, on the uh, left is one of the hotels, newer hotels on the, uh, uh, in the Seaport District, right, right on the Fort Point Channel. On the left is a hotel that's located on D Street, right near the Convention Center uh, in the Seaport. So we want the hotels to have great restaurants. There's got to be a great restaurant on the first floor of this hotel. Frankly, we'd like there to be a great restaurant and bar on the roof of this hotel. We think there'll be nice views of the water, and so let's take advantage of that. This hotel has to be really special right from the get-go, so it's a really important uh, part of, of our plan. Um, in addition to that, there are residential buildings, as we've talked. Uh, if we, have to, we have to set the table to make sure that people will live here as we, uh, as we you know, go forward. Um, and, and the residential is a key part of, of making this a place in which companies can be located, as we've talked you know, a number of different times. This is a slide that shows you on the, uh, the darker orange uh, slides are what we would call mixed-use residential buildings, where there's uh, active retail on the first floor. The lighter yellow are residential buildings that are uh, kind of off the beaten path of the retail, so those will have uh, either no retail or less retail than the, the mixed-use mixed -use pieces. This is a, a slide that shows you the residential unit mix. So remember that a significant portion of our residential units we're dedicating to senior housing. So 10% of all units will be for senior housing, which is uh, very important for us in terms of building community. We want to make sure that uh, it's, it's not just uh, young people here. We want to make sure that there's senior housing available. Uh, we've also thought through that for sale opportunities or condominiums will be a key part of what we'll offer. In addition, there have to be rental apartments as well, because that's the fundamental underpinning of the residential market as well. So, But we really want to focus on a variety of different uh, types of units, variety of different types of people who will live here. Uh, and in particularly in the rentals, we'll do no three bedrooms um, throughout, which I think has been a concern of uh, people uh, on the council. Uh, we've done, again, a lot of work within the DAG process to, uh, to go through this whole uh, proposal. This just gives you a sense of the residential precedents that we've uh, gone through. Uh, on the left in this uh, slide are two that we've built, actually, just give you a sense of the, the quality and the level of which the amenity package that we put together. We want this residential to be very high quality. We want it to be successful in the long term. We're long-term owners, as, as we've said to you a number of times. This is a this is a 20-year project for us, so we're going to be doing this for a long time, and we want to get it right from the get-go by investing well uh, in the beginnings of, of this uh, project. This is a slide that kind of runs through our parking targets, so each of these buildings will have parking uh, within the buildings. We've worked very hard not to overbuild the parking, but to both with the DAG members and with city staff to ensure that we have enough parking to be sure that the site will work. So from retail to residential to office, we this is a slide that shows you the total number of, of, of parkers on site. I apologize, I'm not going to read the numbers because it's a little bit like an eye doctor's exam for me because I can't quite see the numbers from here, but we'd be more than happy to go back through uh, some of these pieces with you. These are locations in which the parking will be located, so we'll have on-street parking, particularly for the retail. Uh, we'll, as you know, we'll uh, build out all the streets, and we are responsible for taking care of the streets and all those things, uh, but we'll also want to have some on-street parking. We, do, we want this parking to be for retail. We don't want this parking to be certainly for commuters, so we'll be working very carefully to be sure that the, the uh, parking that we create here will be, uh, again, you know, focused on, on retail. The next couple of slides, we're showing some community benefits. Um, this is kind of hard for me to read because they show up a little, little smallish for me. But essentially, we've gone through tax revenue. Um, I, I think in Revere, I'm going to look at my guys. I think it's 40, yes, yes, uh, is $30 million. So uh, the total tax benefits, um, I think, are like 41, 40, 42 million. Net benefits, after going through a study, are about $30 million for Revere, which is a you know, obviously a very significant number compared to uh, any other. I think that's the largest single property tax number, uh, certainly in the history of, of Revere. Uh, we proudly, we're very proud of that. We'll create all the, um, the, the parks and the open space network, as you can see on this slide. Uh, we'll do all the interior road network. We do all the uh, infrastructure around water, sewer, all those different pieces. We'll do all that work. We spend a lot of time with the Department of Public Works and the staff there. We thought we've, we've spent a lot of time with the Mass Water Resources Authority to make sure that we understand exactly what we're getting into. Just these infrastructure pieces, together with the off-site infrastructure investments that we proposed, will tally, tally up to $300 million. So what we're saying is we're going to spend $300 million 
on infrastructure both on our site and off our site to improve transportation and traffic uh, and all those different pieces and that's uh, in our proposal as we've gone through it. Um, this is a transit oriented development site as you know and so we've worked carefully to make sure that as a transit oriented development site we've oriented the site towards the two blue line stations and towards the, the potential for the, uh, the buses as well that are here. Um, we thought carefully by, you know, by creating a, a bus shuttle loop on site so the people who live a little bit further inland or in site, inside the site away from the blue line stations that on bad weather days or cold days will have uh, a bus shuttle loop for them to encourage them to use the blue line um, stations there. We'll also create other shuttle connections, both to South Station and to North Station, to encourage people to um, you know, use our shuttle connections and make those connections to other uh, opportunities to connect to the T. This kind of gives you, this is a slide that shows you, we've done the what I think is the most extensive transportation study of any developer um, in Massachusetts in recent memory, as far as I can tell. We actually did two studies on, uh, on transportation. One study, um, which was done at the behest of the MassDOT staff, was using the MassDOT um, state model that, that seeks to model large regional projects. It was called the CTPS model. So that study, the results of that study are on the left. We found that study to be kind of overly car-centric and not really matching with, with what uh, typical transportation engineers see for experience for transit-oriented sites like this. So we did a second study as well to be sure that we studied what the impacts could be on the blue line. So the way to think about these studies is on the left, that's kind of the car centric study and improvements to the, the car or the highways that we propose manage that study. And on the right is kind of the, the study that we think is a little bit more accurate, accurate that shows a little bit more blue line ridership. And so for that one, we focus in on, okay, what will the impacts be on the blue line? So that we're, we're thinking carefully about the margins here of what the potential impacts could be across, across the board. I will say just on, the, on the, the transportation piece, if I could, essentially by spending the $300 million, which includes about $50 million offsite, we, after we build the site out fully, this is, I'm giving you the conclusion of the, of the, uh, the book and the, the analysis, after we build the site out fully, we end up with a site that is um, uh, that improves the level of service across the board on every intersection. Many intersections today are level F. We improve those intersections to uh, a C or a D in every instance. Now, obviously, you know when, when I went to school, a C or a D was not going to cut it um, in most instances. But in this kind of a uh, scenario where you have F, um, you know, for most of these these uh, these intersections, and you're improving them to a C or D, those are substantial improvements. Um, and so we feel really good about where we are. We spent a ton of time with MassDOT, with your staff here, with uh, the staff in the city of Boston. Everything that we proposed, all the improvements that we proposed, have been worked through with all those folks all the way through. These slides kind of show blue line capacity. And what these show you is for both the transportation studies that we did, the CTPS and the TOD study, we're under policy capacity in terms of the additional blue line uh, ridership. So on this one, if you can see the tips of the blue line um, uh, bar charts, those are uh, bar, uh, bar graphs, those are uh, the orange pieces are our people that we're adding as a result of our uh, development at full build out in the year 2038. So as you can see, the green line is the line that shows what the so-called policy capacity is of the blue line, and we're under the policy capacity in the morning commute hour, and we're under the policy capacity in the afternoon commute hour coming back. In addition to that, by the way, by introducing offices uh, and office buildings to the site, you can see on the left-hand side of this one, um, we're getting opposite commuters for the first time coming the blue line. As you know, the blue line is kind of a one-way train that runs uh, into the city of Boston in the morning with, with commuters and runs back out of the city of Boston uh, in the afternoon with commuters because of the lack of office space out here. When we build office space on our site, we fill those trains uh, with people going each way, which in, you know is better business, obviously, for the T and allows the T to not run empty trains back and forth. We also study the existing platforms to be sure that increased ridership it can be managed by the platforms, and so this is um, a slide that kind of shows you that through. I'd refer everybody to the book that we filed. It's a, it's a very extensive um, effort. I think just the summary page is like 175 pages or so. The summary section, I'm sorry, is about 175 pages. So it's very, uh, very, very comprehensive. We studied 53 intersections um, across, across the area. This is a slide that <clears throat> shows you where those intersections are and everything that we did. 
Uh, in addition to that, we uh, walk through um, a road safety audit on a number of other intersections. These are intersections in which there have been uh, uh, accidents that have caused injuries. So, so we went through a road safety audit to come up with suggestions of how we could increase uh, safety. Um, we then, you know, went through a, a variety of, of opportunities to stress traffic mitigation and where we would improve um, uh, intersections along the way. I, I would just point out I'm joined by my partner Doug Manns, uh, but also John Kennedy, who's here from VHB. In case people have any more detailed questions about our proposal, we did go through uh, at least two very detailed presentations on this with the uh, development advisory group as well. But we're happy to go through in more detail whatever the council would like uh, for us today. This is a slide that just shows you Route 1A. I'm just going to kind of cut to the bottom line on this. We'll, we'll essentially take Route 1A, which is two lanes in each direction, and make it three lanes in each direction, change the intersections at Boardman Street, but most importantly, change, as I said, the entrance and exit uh, for us on our site. Uh, this is probably about a $15 million uh, piece of the, of the $50 million that we'll spend off site. So it's a very significant um, investment in our site and, uh, and the 1A connection that we'll make uh, to our site directly from our site in the current Suffolk Downs entrance and exit. This is just shows you these are the list of intersections in which we propose mitigation. Again, everything that we proposed, we did in conjunction with both your city staff as well as the city of Boston city staff and uh, both District 4 and Dist District 6 of, um, of MassDOT, uh, as well as the MBTA. So we've, we've gone through extensive uh, staff-related uh, effort to, to make sure that we've uh, gotten everybody's sort of basic approval for what we filed. This just shows you a slide, again, to emphasize the investment that we're making uh, at the, uh, the main entrance and exit uh, from our site. We would expect that the majority of the traffic will be handled off of our, uh, off of our site, um, off of Thomasella Road, because, again, we'll uh, invest a tremendous amount of money in 1A, tremendous amount of money in that intersection, uh, and fully signalize that intersection for the first time, which it is not today, as people know. You, you, in fact, even today, when I was coming out here in the midst of uh, you know, traffic, there was one guy who was trying to make a U-turn, make a left in the middle of that traffic coming. He was going north. Another guy was trying to come out of the Suffolk Down site and make a left across the traffic. So you folks see it every day. We've seen it certainly for the two years that we've been on it. Um, and so correcting that and making that intersection work is a key part of our investment. Um, <clears throat> just a little bit on environmental and resiliency. We spent a tremendous amount of time. We, we take it as a, a great opportunity and, frankly, a responsibility to make sure that we make the site resilient over time. And we'll use the park system. We'll raise the site uh, in certain areas where we'll build buildings and roads. And we'll keep the site low in certain areas where we build the park in order to, uh, to manage the occasional stormwater that will come our way. So this just gives you a sense. This is our everyday condition in, uh, at full build out in uh, 2038. This is a condition that anticipates um, the 100-year uh, storm event. So this is the amount of water that will you know, flow onto our site. We manage it responsibly. Uh, responsibly. We'll create a, a stormwater outflow system, which this site does not have, has never had. Um, and we will um, be able to manage that stormwater responsibly as the storm uh, event subsides. So just to give you an example, this is an um, a, uh, outdoor music facility that we've proposed uh, uh, just um, out, outside of our, our phase one piece, right, you know, part of our, our Revere uh, section. Uh, but this also becomes a place where we can manage stormwater. So this will collect and hold, um, you know, literally uh, hundreds of thousands of gallons of water uh, in the event of a storm and then allow, allow that to flow out. This just gives you a sense of where the water uh, flows in. Certainly the, the DPW um, uh, team knows this issue well. We've worked very closely with the members of the DAG to talk about this issue. Uh, we've talked about you know, exactly what we'll, we'll think about in terms of our on-site improvements or what we'll do, I, I'm sorry, on our on-site improvements. But we've also talked about ways that we could perhaps build a berm uh, and think about protecting um, the areas of Beachmont that today are subject to frequent flooding. So this slide kind of gives you a sense of that. We're hoping that we'll make connections from the East Boston Greenway uh, through a bike trail that might come all the way out to, to where we are. I know this is kind of a hard one to see, but if you look in the lower right-hand corner, uh, kind of near the, the parking lot of the school that's there, the Beachmont School that's there, um, that's our, our, one of the ideas that we've kind of put forward is a very simple fix of a berm would allow us to protect that, that part of Beachmont uh, and, uh, um, and, as we say, kind of be a very simple and straightforward fix for that piece of it. Phasing, just a little bit on, on this, I think. This just gives you a sense of there are at least four phases that we proposed in, in Revere. These would be uh, memorialized in, um, uh, in the special permit that we filed with you. Uh, the first phase uh, is a, a piece that, uh, you know, as we said, would include the Innovation Center and a hotel and retail. These are the other phases, including the Boston side of the, uh, of the, the project as well. 
Um, sorry, just to, to give you a sense of, again, it's four phases kind of across the entire site all the way through. I know I moved at a fast clip because I was trying not to use too much time. I'm happy to take questions or whatever you'd like to do, Madam President, next. Thank you so much. So that gives us about 15 minutes for uh, questions and answers. We do have an appointment subcommittee starting at quarter of. So I'm just going to start at this end and work our way down. So if any councillors have anything, we'll just start with uh, Councillor Gonasso and we'll just go right down. I'm not going to call on anyone. Just Madam President, uh, I heard the presentation previously and I'm in full agreement with everything you said because based on the fact that uh, dealing with Mr. O'Brien and he's also given uh, private uh, introductions to the property and himself. So uh, I don't need any more information that's already been furnished. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilor McKenna. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Madam President. I have one question, Tom. Um, some of the residents down in Washburn have a concern about um, when Suffolk Downs is developed that that street would be used as a um, delivery uh, for trucks. Um, and I just want to clarify that with you. Um, no, Councillor, it would not. So all of our, all access to the site for any kind of construction related um, activity or any of those sorts of things will all be on our side, probably off of Tomasello, off of 1A, directly onto, on, you know, onto our site. There will be no, we don't have any connection across to Washburn Ave, so there's, there's no way for us to do that. Thank you very much. Yes, Councilor Morbido. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. O'Brien, thanks again for the, I can't even count how many presentations I sat through. <laughs> I'm sorry but, if I'm boring um, you guys. I, I, I really don't have any questions. Um, I just have to say you've always been upfront with me with every aspect of the project and been willing to answer any one of my questions and you don't hesitate at, at all. So, and that's, I couldn't ask for anything more in a developer. So thank you. Thank you. Councilor Novoselsky. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Tom, what can I say? It's, I've, been, I've been there all, every meeting except for one, uh, all the DAG meetings. And uh, every time I've gone, there's been a great presentation between you and Doug and uh, John when he was there in traffic. And everybody knows that, you know, I'm into the traffic uh, phase of it. And, uh, you know, I, I'm into other things too, but the traffic is very important to me, especially for the folks in my neighborhood coming out of North Shore Road and Tomasello Road. Um, and it's quite expansive. Uh, now, there were some numbers uh, when we were talking casino days, uh, $50 million worth of traffic mitigation, which are fifty appropriate we're, number. We'll do 50 off-site, and, and you know, our total on-site is probably another 250. So our, our total number for infrastructure is about $300 million which is, again, it gets built out over time. It's a daunting number for us, but you know, we, we went into this knowing, <coughs> we're not asking for anybody's sympathy, we went into this knowing it would be a big expensive project, um, but $50 million will be our offsite number, which is a big number. Okay, excellent. And um, entertainment on the site, movie theaters, I'm just asking, bowling, uh, a theater type venue, is that included in any of these? Yeah, I'm a terrible bowler, but we, we definitely, we, we would, we're open to uh, entertainment. We definitely, I mean, the next phase for us, after we've gone through this community engagement process and kind of thought, you know, through what the city would like and, you know, gotten, we'd like to get additional feedback from you on that kind of entertainment. So I think music, movies, bowling, athletics, you know, all those sorts of things, we, we definitely want to have it be a very active site for a wide range of people, you know, all age groups. Right. So. And, and finally, just the last comment, you know, I want to thank you for your, your thinking out of the box because, you know, Councilor McKenna and I both have issues that are adjacent to the project. And I want to thank you for being open to helping us to cure some of these long time problems. Uh, so we're looking forward to it. What happens in 20 years, you know, if I'm still around, I'll be 93. Uh, <laughs> I'll be 75. We can still go to the bagel bin together. You know what? I said don't tell anybody. Well, I, I, hey, I'm proud of it. You know, it's, all, all I know is, um, you know, thank you. Um, I want to thank uh, everybody involved that's been involved with it, uh, your, your team. Um, your, your, um, your, your other quarterback, uh, Doug, Doug is the... Uh, pitcher on the mound, yeah. and, um, you know, we, we have the Red Sox that won last night, world champs, and we're all happy about that, and we're in my tie. That's Tomorrow it. night we go see the Celtics to move on to the 
Dino's the West Walker. Dino's the West Walker. He's like the short and out, you know. But I don't want to talk about the Yankee guy in your team. (laughs) (laughs) Only one. one. So thank you very much. I wish you luck. I wish we all of us luck on what's what's coming up. Thank Thank you, you. Counselor, and also Counselor McKenna. I mean, I think you two have sort of been our home counselors and really helped been great advisors to us right from the very beginning. We appreciate that. You know, the one the one thing I would add on the the traffic piece, um, Counselor, is as we talked in the DAG. Our hope is that as we move this project forward, we can join shoulders with you to help implement a number of regional projects that we've all thought about for a long time. The, this corridor, both the Blue Line corridor as well as the 1A corridor, has not been invested in appropriately, we think, by the state. I mean, just to, to say it clearly. And I think, you know, the opportunity is there as we start to redevelop the site and take a site in which there's not much in the way of tax revenue, not much in the way of, you know, contribution. But we're going to bring activity to the site, and we want to work with you to address some of those larger regional, you know, challenges. So that would be great. Council Mahana. Thank you very much. I just want to, again, thank you for um, listening to me. And I know the people are very happy about the uh, new bus stop that's in, uh, that goes from uh, Beachmont Station to, into uh, Stop and Shop. So thank you very much for listening to me and making that happen. Dino, thank you. Well, we're going to be together for a long time, and our intention is to be good neighbors, that's for sure. So, thank you. Thank you, Councilor. So on this side, we're going to go up here. Councilor Patch. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I, I got the, uh, to say that, uh, same as my fellow uh, councilors uh, have, uh, have said, that uh, you, I've had several meetings with you over the period of time, the last being this past Wednesday, and uh, every once in a while, uh, a crazy rumor will come up. Like you, we had a little laugh over the last one. Uh, but um, I just, uh, I have uh, no questions. You, uh, uh, you, you're always there if uh, we can pick up the phone, or you know, we have a little coffee uh, now and then, and. Um, I just wish you luck. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thanks, Councilor. Thank you. Councilor Powers. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Tom, I'm, I'm very uh, glad to hear, as I, we had coffee the other day, and we touched on it, the possibility of connecting the blue line up with the commuter line, uh, perhaps at one at Wonderland in that area. And I think that's something that really has to happen, uh, particularly if yourself and whoever develops Wonderland is going to be reaching out uh, for uh, employees that are talented and that uh, can fill the uh, long-term positions at those sites and also at the uh, NECO site. Uh, The the question I I just want to make clear in my mind, you know, you talk about the Innovation Center and the uh, retail. uh, At at what point will, do you anticipate, according to uh, your your plans now, everything going uh, on track, the uh, the hotel down there? uh, First phase. So so if I could just, on the Wonderland connection, so as as we discussed, Councillor, and you, you know, you raised this with us, and so we appreciate you making sure that this, that was on our screen. You know, we... um, uh, we see that as a really simple connection that can be made between the commuter rail as it flies right by and the Wonderland Blue Line stop. Um, we've included it on our list of, of uh, projects that you know we, we'd like to push the Commonwealth to, to think about. And we've also included it specifically on our agenda of items that we've brought up already with the Secretary of Transportation. So as recently as just a week or two ago, that was you know one of the items that we, we brought up with her. She's interested in it and believes that's kind of one of a group of you know, not huge, not not big costs. They're relatively simple projects that can make connections across the system. So it kind of plays right into what her strategic, you know, thinking is on that. So we'll keep pushing on it. We'd love to work with you on that one. Um, Certainly, much less costly than takings down on one day. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Way, 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 much, um, uh, much more intelligent with the public purse. You know, I, I agree with you on that. On the um, on the hotel. Um, we want to build the hotel in the first phase. So, so those those pieces will we're gonna our first phase is about 1.4 million square feet. So it's you know we we it'll be one of the largest projects you know in, in the history of Revere uh, to be honest with you because we're trying to create a sense of place right from the get go. Uh, we'll build you know that the the full public plaza that comes with that. 
the innovation center, the hotel. As I said, we want the hotel to be something special. So we're not just going to settle for a quick fix that is an ordinary hotel. We want it to be a special hotel with great uh, retail, great restaurants associated with it. It's right at the front door, so we want it to be very successful. Uh, we hope it's going to be an attractive place, not just for people who are staying there, but for people who might want to go enjoy dinner there or go up and have a drink on the on the rooftop bar. That's we want it to be very special, and that'll be first phase. Well, thank you very much, Mr. O'Brien. You. You've been very informative, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing this going forward as a very successful uh, project. Thanks, thank Councilor. You. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Rizzo. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, Tom, I can, I can tell that you've probably had over 300 meetings the way you were rattling all this <laughs> stuff off slide after slide. Um, Obviously, you've uh, immersed yourself in this project, and there's a lot of good uh, that I've heard come from it. And I'd also like to take this time to thank the uh, Development Advisory Group for their hard work. I know I get from Bob O'Brien, I get uh, updated before each meeting, and all of the materials are sent to every councilor. So uh, certainly, as one of the city councilors here, I want to thank you for that. And um, you know, but but there are but there are um, a lot of people, as you can imagine, that are very concerned what's going to go on down there. I know we had talked about taking, uh, and I know working with VHB uh, in years prior on traffic studies. You know, we have a lot of Fs that are going to As, but there's a lot of people out there who think that Suffolk Downs right now, as it is, is an A, and they think it might go to an F. So you know, it's. It really is up to up to us as a city council to make sure that, despite the tremendous reputation that you and your company has, that we protect the people of this community. And that's one thing that I've said right from the beginning. So I think you know that we've met yes. we've met several times. I met with Dino several times. Um, you know there are concerns. Uh, council Novoselsky had mentioned the 50 million dollars in traffic upgrades, and that is outside of the site, which is where, quite honestly, I'm most concerned about right now. The work that's inside has to be done to accommodate whatever development is there. So as far as the outside work where our own residents travel day to day, this $50 million of improvements, it's a little concerning to me because in 2013, there were $50 million of improvements. Now we're talking about 2019, and we're still at a number of $50 million. So I don't know if there are less outside the site traffic improvements going on or if those dollar amounts haven't changed i really haven't got that deep into the traffic study nor would i be anywhere near qualified as your own traffic consultants to to figure that out but but that's just one thing that just jumps out at me the other thing that concerns me we haven't heard a word about it um and maybe you have an idea is the notion of Amazon coming to the site I, they have not they said by the you know end of the summer they would have a decision Clearly, that hasn't happened. And in all honesty, I haven't read or seen anything that would indicate that there's a, a decision coming soon. It kind of fell off the face of the earth. I don't know if you have any more inside information, but that could potentially be 50,000 people, you know, 24 hours a day, but, you know, 15,000 a shift or whatever it's going to be, should it come there, or maybe more at certain times, you know, maybe lower in the third shift or something along those lines. But that, that obviously would add to the density of that site if that is still something that might go forward. So, 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 so that outside of the number of apartment units that still kind of stagger me in all honesty. I mean, as I look at Assembly Row, which is 45 acres, they've got 1,000 residential units. Um, we have, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, I think 40 some odd acres in Revere. And we're looking at closer to 3,000 residential units. So that number definitely concerns me. And while people may say it doesn't impact our school system, it doesn't impact traffic, it doesn't impact flooding, it doesn't impact stress on, on municipal services, I feel as though that you really, um, I, think it's, I think it's foolhardy to think that. You know, I think, you know, as we look at some projects, Tom, that have, you know, and nowhere near the scope of what we're talking about over here, but Overlook Ridge, I mean, I've already mentioned that, no commercial development up there, all residential. Parcel H, they promised us a hotel five, six, seven years ago. 
no hotel as of yet. They keep saying it's in the planning, it's in the planning, it's in the permitting. And even should it come, even should that come, it's still years and years later. Um, while we have instead at Parcel H of a hotel 305 more apartment units going up there. And, and, you know, and in all honesty, I didn't even know that there were 305 more apartment units going there. I had to find out what, what it was because I saw all the development going on down there. So, you know, and uh, of course the Shaw's project across the street, that there's no inhabitants there right now. There's a lot to be concerned about from the perspective of a city councilor. And so when we start talking about, and I said this at the beginning, there's going to be something built at Suffolk Downs. And we, I, trust me, I don't want to be, I don't want to be an obstacle to that. Um, but I want to protect the city. And I think the way we protect the city, you know, I, one part of the presentation that I saw, that I saw our, uh, our city clerk had forwarded us over the presentation prior, I didn't see the slide up there. Maybe I just missed it. But phase one, and I'm not sure how long phase one goes on for, 82% of phase one is residential. And again, that is just very concerning to me because we're going to be you know, pulling or pushing tons of people into our community. You know, if you have 28 units, you're talking how many people? 5,000 more people? And then you factor in the Boston side, there's only so much access and egress you know, based on the numbers that I was looking at, where the Suffolk Downs alone would be in the top 120 largest cities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So it is a major, major project that's going to have impacts. And I just want to be sure that the impacts that were protected in an agreement that's signed and agreed to by both, by both HYM and the city, and that, um, you know, the commercial component of this project, um, you know the the you know the phase one, the 82 percent of phase one being residential was a little knocked me back a little. I mean, I would have liked to have seen that more, um, like a 50-50 split. Uh, Councilor, you know, to be honest with you, we're about five minutes over, and we still have two councilors left. Okay, um, those are my concerns, Tom. So I'll I'll just I'll can just throw them out. Can there. I give you a couple of quick answers? Sure. Um, so. Uh, First of all, the, the square footage in Revere does not change with or without Amazon. So it's the same proposal. Remember, 50% is going to be for commercial. We, we did this when we did the rezoning with you guys. The phase is still the, the first phase is still the same with the Innovation Center. Remember, as I've said, um, the key thing is we have to set the table first by making it a place where people will live. Um, on the Amazon thing, um, we, you know, we did invest quite a bit in going after Amazon. As, we, as I reported to you, they, uh, they came and did a visit with us um, in the spring of, of, of this year. Um, I've had some email traffic back and forth a little bit with them. Uh, they've told the public, frankly, that they'll make a decision by the end of this year. There's a lot of kind of back and forth people. It, just this morning in the Globe, they reported that um, the chief executive officer of, of Amazon had dinner in Cambridge, and they took a picture of him. They even listed what he had for dinner on the, in the Globe, if you can believe it. Um, I don't know what all that means. We have, you know, we, we're hopeful, but we haven't heard from them. So. We'll, we'll keep trying to track them. But our proposal for Revere, with or without Amazon, is the same. If I can add just one more thing on, um, uh, on the, the $50 million of offsite uh, traffic uh, mitigation. We're not a casino, as you know, right? So in terms of the casino levels of traffic, I can't speak to what that was. I can't speak to the size of it. I can't speak to the ability of a casino to generate revenue to pay for those sorts of things. We are developers who've been working at this, you know, this trade for 25 years. We can do the $50 million. We put forward what we think are really responsible, you know, uh, really um, uh, good fixes, we think, in a number of different areas, including 1A, Bell Circle, different places. We'd be more than happy to come and sit and go through the details of that with you. I'm happy to do that. But we, we believe we've been very responsible in what we put forward, and we can do it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for coming thank once again. My uh, basic premise in this whole process, to be quite honest with you, uh, has to be transparency. Uh, the nuances of what's going to happen there is going to take place over time. It's going to be a process of give and take and so forth. But one of the things that I feel is the utmost impo importance, and you've done a great job at it, is providing the public the information. My biggest concern is right now there's probably maybe 100 people in here. But we have just about 60,000 people in the city that really don't have a 
uh, a clear idea of what's going to take place. But mark my words, and I'm sure these councillors and other people in the audience can attest to it, that in six months to a year, once you start doing your construction per se, someone's going to complain that there wasn't enough information given, that people were not apprised. That's my only issue, and it's not you. It's the process. And so I want to try and get you before the camera as much as possible because the neighborhood meetings are great, but they're neighborhood meetings. Getting you before the camera gets you before the people. And I know they're videotaping that, but they tend to watch the Revere Council more so than, than that. Not that I'm Nielsen or anything like that. The other issue, which I feel is vitally important. And I'd, I'd be happy to do more of that, Councillor, if you'd like, whatever, whatever, you, whatever you'd like to do. Well, I'd like to get a consensus from okay. you know, my colleagues, of course, and I don't want to impose upon you because I will. And, um, well, our, our basic, <laughs> but you know our basic principle is we're willing to meet with almost anybody you know, anywhere. So we're, and, and, you know, and we, to let the, uh, the public know that, yeah. um, I wouldn't feel comfortable with you if I didn't feel that you were genuine in that and you're one of the few developers that I can clearly say that. And I'm a skeptic. No. So, you wouldn't say it, right, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> but, but that said, um, it does not change my uh, wanting to get you in front of the people as much as possible and as frequently as possible. But that, the issue I feel is the $50 million that Danny was talking about is not in comparison to what was in 2013 or what have you. And uh, I remember Chip Tuttle and other people talking about this. I remember distinctly that uh, there will be more traffic with your product than with a casino. That's quite frankly a, a true statement. I'm not sure. I, I, don't, I just don't know. I've never worked on a casino ever. I'm going by the numbers that they produced. I'm going by the numbers that the state produced in their study I just, uh, regarding I just don't the know. traffic. I just but, don't know if I'd call that a fact. That's the only thing, Councilor. Well, well, they're facts, know. we'll say. So with, with that said, um, being that could be true, it tells me that we need to do something more than just the $50 million. And I don't believe that you should be um, paying for the sins of decades of neglect in the region. And I'd like to have the council, the mayor, and I'm sure you're probably already working on that, but if you're willing to give $50 million for this process, and you need to do that because you're, it's your project, I get that. We need to do something at, at our level to get the state to partner up or at least participate, whether it be one-to-one, -one, whether it be 50%, whatever it is, because this is the time when you make a dramatic impact. This is the time when the state stands up and, and changes these regional issues. Because if we don't, then, we're going to lose that effort, and more importantly, we're going to lose the ability to get that money. So that's one of the things that I want to bring to bear. I'm going to cut my statement short because I know um, uh, the council president has other people to uh, tend to, Tony. And uh, <laughs> in fairness to him, uh, I will uh, acquiesce, and I truly appreciate you coming Thanks, up Council. here. And I want you to know that, uh, you know, anytime you get a little thing from the mayor or anybody else, about me wanting you to come up here. It's solely for the process of transparency. Happy to do it. Happy to do Thank it. Thank we'll, you. you know, we'll do that. And, and I'd be happy to join with you and the city you know, to advocate for the state to do more. We're happy to do that. It's uh, all good. Council. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I don't have a lot of questions. Obviously, uh, you know, uh, my colleague talked about transparency. I don't know what a, a development company that's more transparent than, than your group. Uh, I obviously did my homework, as I always do up here, before you got here. And the, your reputation uh, precedes you. And, and I've been saying, and I sound like a cheerleader, I don't like to do that. However, I've been saying how lucky the city of Revere is to have you uh, to develop this site, because this site could be a nightmare with the wrong developer. And so I'm very comfortable and uh, when I'm not, obviously you'll know about it. And I, it, because we've had developers that promised stuff and didn't deliver. But again, your reputation is not someone who does that. And we don't expect you to change here. Um, too many phones. Uh, I apologize. I shut the other phone off. It took me about an hour to get it shut off. For some reason, it wouldn't let me shut it off. Uh, the other one. Anyways, uh, to, to get to the bottom line, my, my colleague talked about infrastructure. And obviously, 
there's Mass Works grants out there. Uh, we just got a two was a 2.8 million dollar Mass Works grant uh, related to the Shaw site or the area there. To 3.6. All right. To to correct a lot of uh, old infrastructure problems. So I'm sure that you and our economic development team is going to search for any grants that might be available. Yes. Uh, shame on us if we're not doing that. Uh, but again, I, uh, we're about to start a council meeting. I thank you for your presentation. Uh, we've, seen, we've seen it a lot, and uh, as my colleague said, you, you run it off like it's nothing. But <laughs> it, you know, for people out there to see what's really going on there, because there's all kinds of stories, and I think recently there were some crazy rumors, and there's going to be rumors all the time. So, you know, it is, it's good for all of us if, uh, if you can come periodically on the TV yeah. so that there's a record of it and people can go to Revere TV and click on it on YouTube when they want to get some information. So I, and I know you're not trying to hide any information, and uh, we're looking forward to a, a great project, and I'm hoping I'm alive to the end of it. Uh, who knows? Thank you, Councilor. Thank and I you. I would just say on those rumors, if, if rumors come up, if it, as we've said a number of times in all of our meetings, if you hear something that doesn't sound like what we've been saying, please call and we'd be happy to address it. So thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you. And if I may briefly, I want to start by thanking my colleague, Councilor Gonasso, as we have completely plowed over his subcommittee meeting that was supposed to be uh, 15 minutes ago, but we will start that in a moment. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues for uh, keeping their comments minimum. I know that this is a huge project. I know that we've all had the opportunity to meet with the developers on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And, you know, we're very lucky to be working with a group that is so engaged in our community and as well as willing to take our questions and our concerns and work with us as a, a real team effort. So I want to thank the mayor's office and their work and uh, this council for their due diligence. Um, I know that the ward councillors and the neighboring councillors, like councillors McKenna and Novoselsky, I'm sure have more questions. I know myself and councillor Morabito and councillor Rizzo and the other at large councillors have more questions, but I appreciate everyone kind of taking the time to just get the main points across. Uh, there will be another meeting, and I believe it's next week. Um, Madam Clerk, is it the 6th? The 5th, sorry. So uh, November 5th will be the public hearing for the proposal, so that'll be coming across next week. I encourage any counselors to reach out to HYM directly for any other questions, comments, concerns. Uh, the public can reach out to your counselors and we can relay any information or get any answers to any questions that you may have. So thank you all for your time. At this time, I'm gonna have a, this uh, concludes the meeting for the Committee of the Whole. We're gonna take a one 30 second recess so uh, Council Granasso can do a subcommittee meeting. Thank you.